Hi and welcome to my OCRA A-Level Biology Revision Session with me, Christine. So today's lesson I want to look at immobilised enzymes. So let's just remind ourselves about what happens when substrates collide. If they collide in the correct way with the correct energy, which is known as the activation energy, what can happen is those reactants can turn into products. So in this case, the lactose was hydrolyzed down into glucose and galactose. Well, if we now bring in an enzyme, we can lower the activation energy because enzymes are globular proteins. They are there to help the molecules collide successfully and reduce that activation energy so it causes the reaction to occur at a faster rate. So if we have successful collisions and enzyme substrate complexes are formed, we can get the products that we require at the end. So let's just remind ourselves again about enzymes because this is where everything is interlinked. You should know that your genes need to be transcribed onto mRNA, so the DNA base sequence gets copied to mRNA base sequence. That therefore will be read in its triplets known as codons. Now the codons get translated into the amino acids and that forms your polypeptide. And you should know that your primary structure, that sequence of amino acids, are held together by peptide bonds and that they later result in the tertiary structure the folding and the bending of the protein because of these intermolecular bonds and interactions of those R groups. So we know that enzymes are globular proteins. They are rounded 3D shapes. They are soluble in water because the hydrophilic amino acids will orientate themselves on the outside. The hydrophobic amino acids will orientate on the inside. So the way in which it folds is so that the hydrophilic ones are on the outside and the hydrophobic ones are on the inside. We know that these globular proteins are temperature sensitive because if it gets too hot, they will denature. And they're also pH sensitive because hydrogen ions will affect that tertiary structure. And also some of them are conjugated where they actually contain a prosthetic group, a non-protein group. So why are we talking about this? Well, we have to remind ourselves about module two because a lot of this stuff that we are covering for year 13 links back to that module two. So you need to remind yourself that for any type of protein to be produced, we need ribosomes. Well, if we're looking at extracellular proteins, we need to talk about those vesicles that are made from the rough endoplasmic reticulum, the Golgi apparatus, which is going to modify and package, and exocytosis. So protein synthesis can either be intracellular, where we're just talking about the translation occurring at the ribosomes, which are freely floating, or it could be that we're talking about extracellular proteins that are going to leave the cell. So it's very important that we remember all our module two content before we then apply it to this module six content on immobilized enzymes. So what is immobilization? Well, immobilization is where we're going to take those proteins, those globular proteins, we're going to attach them to an inert support system. And there are different ways in which we can immobilize these enzymes. We can either enclose them within a partially permeable membrane. If we cover them and keep them inside, we are immobilizing them that they are not free to move around. So therefore, we are controlling the way in which they will work by keeping them in a container. We can actually covalently bond them to an inorganic carrier. So there's lots of different inorganic carriers that can be used, but what's important to note is that the enzyme would be forming a covalent bond with this inorganic carrier. We can use ionic bonding, so we can immobilize that enzyme by in ionically bonding it to an inorganic carrier. Now, what happens when they are being bonded to these carriers is they are going to be stabilized. So therefore, their tertiary structure changing is actually going to be controlled 
because they have formed extra bonds. So it's very important to note, remembering that before we said that they are temperature sensitive. Well, if we've bonded them, we are going to actually make them a little bit more stable. Another way we can do this is adsorption using, for example, hydrogen bonds where they will adhere to an inorganic carrier or we can entrap them in a matrix or a gel. Again, we're using other materials to form temporary bonds to keep them in an isolated, immobilized position. And what that means is that we are able to use them again and again and again. So there are ones that you need to know that are in the specification, but in a case of you need to know them, it's not about recalling these examples. It will be that they expect you to apply your knowledge and understanding. So as I said before, go back to module two. So glucose, I summarize, they will tell you the name if they want to talk about that one. This is an enzyme that is going to convert glucose into fructose. If we're talking about lactase, this is an enzyme that is going to convert lactose into glucose and galactose. So this is module two knowledge, enzymes, saccharides, how we can break them down. There's glucoamylase. This is where we're going to take our starch to turn this into a glucose syrup. For example, dextrins to glucose. Amino acylase, where what we're going to do is put production of a pure sample of L amino acids. Now these can be used in pharmaceuticals, organic chemicals, cosmetics and food, or penicillin acylase. And that's basically formation of a semi-synthetic penicillin. We need to overcome these antibiotic resistant problems. So these are the ones that are named on your specification, but as it says above, you are not required to recall them, but you will be expected to use knowledge and understanding of immobilizing, making these enzymes not able to move because we have put them onto a support material, either those inorganic carriers or the encapsulating them in a membrane or in a gel. But what they will expect you to do is actually analyze what are the advantages of using these isolated enzymes rather than using, for example, whole cells. So we're talking about biotechnology where we will grow these microorganisms in large quantities and then isolate enzymes from them. Well, it's less wasteful if we're using just isolated enzymes rather than having to use the whole cell. Because remember, if it's a whole cell, that cell needs to do its own metabolic processes. So the substrates that it's being provided with will be broken down into products, but they'll be broken down into every product that the cell needs, rather than just being used to make the product that we want. So by using isolated enzymes, it is less, less wasteful. It's more efficient. If we are isolating those enzymes and we are immobilizing them, what that's going to mean is that we can have a higher enzyme concentration and therefore we can have a faster rate of reaction and get those desired products. So it's more specific. We've got this maximum efficiency because we can give them the ideal conditions so that we get a higher yield of this product formation. And obviously, if we're only using these isolated enzymes and because we're getting that desired product at the end, we have less what's known as downstream processing. We don't need to filter out any of those other products that might be being made. There's no need for that isolation process. So therefore, it is an advantage of us using only isolated enzymes rather than using whole cells. So this is an advancement of biotechnology in that we are now able to isolate those enzymes in the downstream processing side of things, and then we use them for producing our desired products. Now, the ones that we tend to use are mostly extracellular enzymes. So these are the enzymes that were produced in the rough endoplasmic reticulum, through the Golgi apparatus, to the cell plasma membrane where they are released by exocytosis. Why do we use them? 
because they're easily identifiable. And also they're more robust because basically these microorganisms are releasing these enzymes out into the environment so that they can be used to digest down any of the waste material that might be present and then the organism absorbs the smaller molecules in for using itself. So the fact that it is easily identifiable and more robust means that we tend to use those extracellular enzymes for our immobilized enz enzymes. Now we can use intracellular enzymes as well. Now if we use intracellular enzymes, we're going to obviously have a bigger range of the enzymes that are being produced, but it will be more expensive. We need to extract those enzymes, we need to isolate them, we need a tighter controlled condition to ensure that we have the desired product at the end. So therefore, it becomes a more expensive process to isolate those intracellular enzymes and then immobilize them. So remember when you're giving an advantage of using one over the other, don't just use, go to answers like it's cheap or it's expensive. You must give a reason for that expense. It's expensive because you need to not only extract them, you have to isolate them. You need to control those conditions with the intracellular enzymes because they're not as robust. We're talking about globular proteins, globular proteins, which are temperature and pH sensitive. So therefore, we need a tighter control if we're using intracellular enzymes. So I hope you've liked this video and if you have, then please do click on the like button and subscribe to my channel. And if you haven't already done so, please do check out my revision platform, www.aiqchat.com.